Hello everyone. Welcome to Applied Stem Cells Genome Editing Webinar. Today's topic is TARGAT, a mammalian system for antibody protein library screening. I'm Neeraja, your moderator and webinar organizer. Before we get started, I wanted to let you know that we will send you a copy of the presentation afterwards so you can relax and listen to the presentation. You have joined today's webinar listening through your computer speaker system by default. Please make sure to set your audio to microphone and speakers, not telephone. You will have the ability to ask questions using your questions pane. Simply type in your question and click send. At the end of the presentation, we will do a Q&A session and take as many questions as we have time for. Let's get started. Today's speaker is Dr. Lingji Kong, Vice President of Research and Technology Development at Applied Stem Cell. Dr. Lingji Kong has over 10 years experience in drug discovery in the areas of oncology, hematology, metabolic diseases, and gene and cell therapy. He received his PhD in biochemistry from the North Carolina State University and his postdoctoral training in cancer biology from Dr. Joseph Nevin's lab at the Howard Hughes Medical Institute. After a seven year tenure at Merck, where he garnered extensive experience in drug discovery in several disease areas, Dr. Kong joined Applied Stem Cell as head of its research and technology development team. With his deep interest in gene therapy and a passion to bring the best therapeutic strategies to patients, Dr. Kong has spearheaded new discoveries and development in stem cell, bioprocessing, and genome editing technologies. Under his guidance, the company has successfully launched several preclinical and IND stage gene therapy programs, as well as preclinical bioproduction and protein screening platforms. And now, without further ado, I will turn it over to Dr. Kong. Thank you, Niaraja. No, thank you uh, for everybody for your time uh, to join our webinar. Today, I will uh, introduce our target system, uh, a myelin system for antibody uh, library screening. Here is a typical uh, mammalian cell library screening um, procedure. You build your library uh, through uh, upstream screening B cell uh, next generation sequencing, all your library from a synthetic, um, purely synthetic library. You clone your library into a lantivirus uh, expression system. Into, uh, then you package your library into lantivirus. Next step, you will infect your host cell with this lantivirus, and uh, this lantivirus will express different uh, um, proteins. And next, you throw the screening process, you find the, uh, the clone you want, and you identify the final clone and uh, do further analysis. This process is quite successful, but uh, it has uh, its limitations. Here are a few limitations we can uh, list out. The system rely on virus packaging. It is uh, costly and time consuming. And uh, the other disadvantage for this system is that uh, some of the sequences might affect the packaging efficiency. So during the packaging uh, process, uh, you probably amplify your library uh, at a different uh, at a different ratio among different uh, CDNAs. So it will lose the authentic, uh, authenticity uh, of, of this uh, library. The other drawback for this system is a uh, random insertion. We know that lantivirus is a uh, relatively random insertion. So at a different uh, location in, of insertion, it will lead to different expression level of your genes. And the other thing, 
uh, of the, the uh, system is that uh, the variable copy number of inserted gene. We can control MOI to make this uh, random means, uh, make this multiple insertion low, but we cannot eliminate it. That will lead to uh, confused, uh, uninterpretable result after your screening. And another thing is the uh, insertion size. Lantivirus generally have a 7, 8 KB uh, insertion limitation. Uh, for large protein and for uh, biospecific or multi-specific antibodies, this will have a, a disadvantage uh, with the lantivirus system. That leads to our target uh, platform. We will use an integrate-based site-specific gene insertion um, program uh, platform to build a new system to eliminate all the limitations uh, mentioned above. Here, we use uh, our FASI-31 phage uh, system. So this is a life cycle for FASI-31 phage. FASI-31 phage is a bacterial phage. It uh, encodes uh, a specific site called the attachment site, a P stands for phage. And in the bacterial genome, there's a, a specific sequence called the ATDB site. The phage can uh, express a, a protein called the integrase. The integrase will recognize ATDB site and ATDB, ATDB site and catalyze the interaction and uh, integrate the phage genome into bacterial chromosome. This process can be reversible. So when the condition fits, the phage will express another protein, GP3 protein. This protein together with the integrase can exercise the phage genome, go back to the episomal stage. So the, uh, the virus can be <coughs> replicated and expanded. So if you remove the GP3 protein in the system, this, is, this system will become uh, one directional. Your phage can integrate the in, into the bacterial genome without uh, ability to be accessed out. So we can utilize this system for our mammalian system mammalian cell expression system. As we know, in mammalian cell, there's no uh, attachment site for uh, bacterial phage. So we have to engineer a specific uh, site uh, to, for the, for the uh, virus integration. First, we will choose the specific site which uh, can insert the ATDB site. So in the engineer, the mammalian cell line will have a landing pad. And then we clone our gene of interest into a plasmid contains the ATTP site. When we transfect the uh, donor plasmid together with the integrase, the integrase will catalyze the interaction between ATTP and ATTB. The gene of interest can be inserted into the uh, genome. Since we do not introduce uh, the GP3 protein, this process is uh, unidirectional. In this case, at the end, you will have uh, your gene of interest inserted into specific site of the genome of your mammalian cell. So the system rely on a uh, mammalian cell have this docking site. So we need to put the a uh, uh, docking site into the mammalian uh, genome. So to build the to build the master cell line, we need uh, to uh, ask the we need uh, the master cell line meet a further requirement. It sh should be stably express your foreign gene. So the the locus should be stable and a higher efficiency of integration. And no inter, uh, integration of bacterial backbone or other unwanted genes. 
we want the uh, system simple and fast. In the end, we want the final population to be uniform. So to do that, we choose a, a 293T cell at the ROSA26 locus. We know that the ROSA26 locus is a stable expression uh, site. Uh, we studied this in our lab uh, uh, a lot. And we next, we want to put our landing pad at this locus using a CRISPR-Cas9 system. First, we introduce a RNA and a Cas9 and a donor plasmid into uh, this 293 cell. And uh, after a homologous recombination, our landing pad will be integrated into the 26 site at a HEC 293 cell. Our landing pad contains two ATTP sites. In between, there are three genes. We have a pure massing gene and a thymine kinase gene and the integrase gene from uh, FASI31. The pure mass gene is uh, for the selection of our master cell. The integrase gene is uh, for the next step of integration, since we, uh, the, the master cell line will express the integrase, will enhance the uh, integration efficiency when the cell already expressed the integrase. Uh, in the uh, in the cell, and the TK gene is a, a negative select marker uh, for the next selection. I will uh, discuss a little bit more. After we get the master cell line, next we want to see if our system works. We use a reporter gene for uh, for testing our system. First, I will introduce our donor plasmid. Our donor plasmid contains a reporter GFB gene and uh, flanked by two ATTB sites. In the bacterial backbone, we inserted another uh, TK gene. So when we transfect the, the master cell line with our donor plasmid, the integrase coded by master cell line will catal uh, catalyze the interaction between ATTP and the ATTB site, and lead to the swap of the our reporter gene of, uh, with the, the landing pad. The swap can can happen into in two directions. One is the reporter gene swap into the location of Rosa twenty six. The other is a vector backbone swap into the uh, Rosa twenty six locus. But uh, only the product line, which contains the uh, GFP gene without TK gene. The bacterial backbone swap, uh, swap will lead to the cell line contains the uh, TK gene. In the end, there will be four types of the cells in the population. The first one is the uh, untransfected cell or uh, the line swapped cell which contains the TK gene. Uh, the second one is the product one. The, sec uh, the third one is the product, product two. The fourth population is uh, the parental cell with a random insertion. The four populations, only product one has a G GFP gene without TK gene. All other three populations contains a TK gene. Next step, when we apply the gansaclavir uh, into this population, all other cells will be killed. Only one, only product one population uh, have uh, remains. So in the end, you have your cell line, you have your population contain only uh, your gene of interest at this specific locus at ROSA26. And since our master cell line have only one copy of the docking site, uh, this every cell contains only one copy of uh, your gene of interest. This is uh, what it looks like when we uh, do the flow cytometry uh, analysis. 
in the parental cell, CAC293 cell, when we transfect a uh, donor plasmate, we get uh, about 1% of stable uh, uh, integration of the, uh, of the repository gene. So we really see very little of uh, GFP positive cells. And uh, when we introduce uh, our, our donor into the uh, market uh, target master cell line, uh, we will see before selection, we already got a 20% G, what, so, sorry, 12% uh, GFP positive cells. This indicates that our system works much better than random insertion. And uh, after Gansaclavir selection, we got uh, over 90% of the cell are GFP positive. The right side show you the uh, how does it look like after uh, under microscope. As you can see, almost every single cell uh, in the under microscope give you uh, green uh, green uh, fluorescence. So this system is quite effective uh, of knocking. The system takes you from masters, from a transfection to finally get the your population. Uh, with a single site insertion, uh, you take uh, take us two to three weeks. So this system was uh, in uh, worked well in 293T cell. Next, we want to test if this, this system works in another cell line uh, at the uh, another locus. Uh, this time, we choose the true cell. We choose another. Uh, integration site called H11 site. We show that uh, earlier this site is uh, very active in uh, mouse, human, and uh, and pigs. But we never tested it in show cell. So we want to test this if this H11 site uh, and our system works uh, for show cell. Again, we put our landing pad at the show H11 site and get a master cell line. Next, we use the same donor plasmid with a GFP reporter to transfect our cells. So in the control cell line, the parental cell line, when we transfect our GFP uh, reporter, we get less than 1% of cell are GFP positive. After two weeks uh, uh, transfection, this is a stable, uh, uh, stable integration. But when we choose uh, our master cell line, we transfect our transfect our donor plasmid. Before selection, we already see 13% stable integration. Again, uh, the the integrates help of integration. The system worked well even without selection. After the selection, uh, with the uh, Gansaclavir almost every single cell become GFP positive. So as you can see, we reach over 97% of the cell are GFP positive. Here is uh, what it look like uh, under microscope. In the parental cell, we, we see very few GFP positive cells. In our targeted cell cell uh, under microscope, almost every single cell uh, is GFP positive. Now, with our system, we can uh, redraw the procedure for the mammalian cell uh, antibody screening. The system is quite similar to what we do uh, uh, traditionally. Uh, you get to your library. Instead of you clone your library into antivirus system, you clone the library into our target donor system. In this donor system, we have uh, two ATTB sites to link your expression cassette. And after that, we do not need to make antivirus. Instead, we transfer the master cell line directly. And after transfection, every, uh, every single cell contain one copy of your gene. So you, you, the library is a very uniform. The, the insertion will all 
insert into the same locus. Unlike the random insertion of uh, uh, antivirus. So the library is uh, quite uh, uniform, and then the uniform library can be screened with your process of uh, uh, whatever you tra traditionally use for screening method. And in the end, you can identify your clone of interest to further amplification and analysis. The potential applications in, uh, for this system we can think of for the uh, antibody uh, discovery is uh, the first thing is that, auto, uh, of course, we've, we can do the antibody screening. And uh, also, you can build your uh, library for antibody engineering. Another part we can think of is that if we build a membrane library using this system, we can use a library to screen off targets for your drug, especially your antibody. And uh, since this, this system, uh, we show that it also worked in two cell, we can use this system for bar processing. That way, you need a, a high expressing uh, locus, and uh, you introduce a landing pad into in this uh, high expression locus you can uh, knock in your gene of interest into this specific locus uh, give you high expression. In fact, we have uh, uh, our own uh, high expression locus. Uh, in two cell, we can produce two and a half grams per laser without further bioprocessing. Simply goes through our knocking procedure, we can get uh, antibody production or, uh, over two grams per laser. Other potential applications for this system we can think of is that the first thing is in immuno-oncology. Of course, we can uh, discover new cars, so, uh, selecting for the uh, car for, uh, efficiency. And um, also, with the membrane protein library, we can uh, screen for car specificity and uh, screen the, the safety uh, nine uh, of target binding for safety purpose. When we have a universal CAR T or universal CAR and T cell, we can also modify the T cell and, uh, and NK cell, make a master cell line. You can express different CARs uh, use this system at a uniformly uh, stable locus for your specific car uh, expression. This will be much uniform than antivirus based party. And uh, with the library, we can also discover new immuno target and such as a checkpoint, a uh, new checkpoints. And uh, the membrane library based on this system can also be used for uh, ion channel study and the GPR study for receptor, for receptor identification. And again, uh, the uh, membrane protein library can be used for off-target screening. This is not limited for the membrane protein uh, or secretory protein. We can build the library uh, on the use this system uh, with your gene of interest or, or the family of proteins of interest. Another uh, perspective for this system can be used is for protein evolution. In fact, we are using this system for our integrated uh, activity and specificity uh, evolution process. We can imagine that we can use this uh, system to, uh, with uh, different libraries, for, CAS, for example, for Cas9 evolution to find a different PAM or different uh, uh, small off-target effects. And uh, in gene therapy uh, area, we can use this system to build uh, AAV capsid library for screening the specificity, uh, specificity and the efficiency of the AAV uh, infection. Here is a, a comparison 
of our system with a traditional uh, lantivirus system for the mammalian library uh, screening. Our target system gives you site-specific gene insertion compared to a lantivirus random insertion. This clear have its own advantage since uh, it's a site specific. Uh, every gene uh, will insert it into the same locus that leads to uh, the protein level to be uh, very consistent from uh, different cells. And the latent virus, on the other hand, because of the uh, random insertion, the protein expression level will vary among cell to cell. I mentioned of the uh, insertion site of uh, insertion size uh, of your gene, uh, the lantivirus have a limited uh, insertion uh, capacity, uh, usually seven to eight kbs. Uh, our targeted system will actually have a less limitation. We routinely insert 10 to 20 kbs in our system. Uh, we did a lot of work with the transgenic uh, uh, service. Uh, it, we routinely uh, successfully inserted uh, size more than uh, 10 kb. We actually, one of the uh, projects, we inserted 22 kb uh, into the genome. And uh, other labs show that uh, integrated system can insert uh, up to 230 kb into Drosophila genome. And uh, the other point uh, I want to uh, tell uh, about is that our target system in the end the cell population doesn't have uh, any selector marker. And uh, uh, you don't have a, a bacterial backbone either. Because of simplicity without a virus involved, uh, we, there's a system cost less and uh, uh, time uh, of the uh, system will be short than lantivirus. Lastly, which is a very important is that our target system have a only single copy insertion. And the lantivirus, on the other hand, uh, the insertion uh, between cell to cell will vary. Some cell might have a multiple insertion. So you have a, might have a two genes into the same cell. That way, when you get the your screening result, you will have the uh, cell library. You don't know how to explain. Uh, you the, the will make this uh, uh, result hard to interpret. With that, uh, I would like uh, thank my team who uh, did uh, the work. She did most of the uh, tonight work, and Shulin did most of the uh, uh, cell work. Alfonso, Jimmy, Pomagia, uh, Na, and Diana did most of the molecular biology gene editing work. And uh, Ruby is our CSO who uh, oversees our company's uh, uh, science and strategy. This work uh, originally uh, started with uh, uh, Michelle Kellos and uh, Lee Quinn Law's Lo lab uh, in Stanford. We have a, a collaboration with them continually for the last few years to improve the system. And now we have a system is much simpler uh, than original one. And we still uh, collaborate with uh, those two labs uh, in, uh, on a uh, daily basis. With that, I will thank you very much for your time. And uh, I can answer your questions. This is our, our contact information. If you need more information, uh, I'll, if I couldn't answer your questions, uh, you can contact us uh, at this uh, uh, site. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Kong. Um, before we move on to the question and answer session, uh, we hope you can give us some feedback by answering two short poll questions. Thank you for your responses. Um, oh, sorry, <laughs> we have a second question.
Thank you for your responses. Now we will take some questions. The first question, have you compared Targat with the flip-in system? Actually, uh, we didn't directly compare, but we do have uh, experience with the uh, 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 flip, flip, uh, flip in system. Um, as I uh, mentioned uh, during the talk, we actually have a, 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 a library screening process uh, with uh, uh, integrated uh, evolution. Uh, we, at the very beginning, uh, we tested a bunch of uh, uh, system, including flip system for the library construction. Uh, in the flip in system, without selection, we the insertion, uh, uh, the uh, the insertion efficiency was well below one percent. In our system, we got a twelve percent without selection. So the flipping system without selection, basically you cannot build a library. You have to insert a selectable marker to make the uh, to make a selection and uh, to build the library. That will uh, make it. A, very inefficient. In our case, it's much more efficient. Um, second question. Can you generate a master cell line with the cell line that I'm interested in? Uh, absolutely, yes. So we can, uh, since we uh, we tested the system in both uh, a true cell and the two natural system, we clearly know how to do it, and we are confident we can. Uh, this uh, system will apply at other site uh, in other cell lines, so there will not be a problem to generate a, a, a cell line from a different site and a different uh, uh, cell uh, origin of the cell. Next question. Uh, is there any way to avoid GAN cyclovir selection? Uh, yes, so the GAN cyclovir make it very simple in the system, uh, but uh, we can replace the, uh, the TK gene with uh, other markers. Uh, for example, uh, fluorescent protein. Uh, we can use the GFP or our YFP. Uh, you, uh, after knocking, you can select uh, uh, the uh, the fluorescent negative uh, fluorescent protein negative cells that will probably need to uh, rely on uh, flow cytometry. Um, but uh, as I showed you that we have uh, over ten percent twelve percent a year for the two natural cell, thirteen percent for the um, uh, true cell. Uh, by itself, uh, it's already very high efficiency. If you can uh, live with this. Uh, a higher efficiency without a selection that will work too. Okay, um, next question. Um, do you provide the reagents that I can use to generate the master cell line by myself? Yes, we can. So uh, the detail, uh, you can contact us so we can uh, from a, a collaboration or uh, whatever uh, suitable for you. Uh, we will accommodate that. Uh, we can definitely uh, help you to achieve your goals. Okay. Um, the last question. Do you have um, IP for the system? Uh, yes, we actually have uh, three IPs uh, along the system, including uh, uh, original uh, uh, integrated uh, IP and uh, later we had two IPs at the different sites and uh, uh, use this uh, uh, advanced cassette uh, for the landing pad uh, and uh, negative selection, including uh, the integrates, uh, embedded integrates in the landing pad. So we do have a full write and uh, full, full IP with uh, all those uh, uh, process and uh, welcome uh, collaborate with you. Um, so uh, we have some more questions coming in. Um, when you run a screen using the HEK and show cells, do you ever uh, observe different interactions? 
Uh, we actually have not uh, have the chance to uh, screen uh, for the screening. We have this system. We are uh, interested in uh, inter uh, 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 collaborate with you uh, to uh, for the library screening. We really uh, do not have uh, experience with uh, especially antibody screening. Uh, for us, we do use a system for the protein evolution. We do get our uh, some uh, some of the our mutations. We uh, get uh, we you know get the, uh, the the desired mutations we we want. So it's quite successful in our case uh, for the antibody uh, for the protein screening for the enzyme activity uh, uh, evolution. But uh, antibody screening we do not have a direct uh, experience. The last question, what is the level of concordance when using different target lines? Um, I, I'm not so sure I uh, get this uh, uh, question uh, uh, clearly. So uh, could you say again? What is the level of concordance uh -huh. when using different target lines? We actually only test those uh, two lines, uh, so uh, two cell and two nine three cells. So they are pretty much similar. Uh, before selection, we both get uh, like a twelve percent and thirteen uh, percent uh, knocking, and uh, after selection, over ninety percent of the cell are uh, knocking uh, are knocking positive. So. They are quite consistent at a different site and a different uh, uh, cell line. Uh, we believe uh, will be the same for other cell lines. I hope I answered your question. Okay. Um, thank you all. Um, that's all the questions that we have time for, um, but we will definitely answer your other questions individually via email. For additional questions, please send your questions to info at appliedstemcell.com as seen on the screen, and we will answer them for you. We will also send you a copy of the presentation along with a short survey. Please let us know about other webinar topics you would like to hear in future presentations. We appreciate your feedback. Thank you so much for attending. Thank you.